partial fractions. A rational function is the quotient of two polynomials. Let's say they call them gx and h of x. And f of x is equal to g of x divided by h of x. It's a rational function. Here's an example. 4x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. The degree of g of x is less than the degree of h of x. Then it's a proper fraction, of course, because it's smaller in the numerator than it is in the denominator. If it's the other way around, so if the degree is bigger in the numerator than in the denominator, then we have improper fractions. Now this is important, this section here. The proper fractions for every linear factor ax plus b in the denominator, there will be a partial fraction of the form a divided by ax plus b. For every repeated linear factor cx plus d squared in the denominator, there will be a partial fraction of the form b divided by cx plus d, and c divided by cx plus d, all squared. For every irreducible quadratic factor, irreducible means we can't actually factorise it, so we can't not be, cannot factorise this in the denominator, there will be a partial fraction of the form dx plus e divided by ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to need to use these to help us. And I've just told you what an irreducible fraction means. This is the way we solve it. I'm going to go straight into an example anyway. Example 13. Resolve 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 3, x plus 3 into partial fractions. So <coughs> we can say let 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 1 x plus 3 equal, now because we have two factors in the denominator it's actually going to be a divided by x minus 1 plus b divided by x plus 3 which means when I get the right hand side into denominator, one denominator, it's going to be a x plus 3 plus b x minus 1. I'm not even going to be bothered writing the denominator because I'm going to equate at the same time. I'm going to write here and equate. And this will equal 3x plus 5 because the denominators will go. Now the easiest way to do it here is, well we can expand this and then collect like terms and solve for a and b. That's one way. The other way is, which it can be done, to say right, substitute x equals, and I'll pick 1 because I've got the bracket x minus 1 and then I'll pick negative 3. So let's pick 1 first, x equals to 1, into the equation, and I get 3 plus 5, so I get 8, equals 1 plus 3 for here gives me 4a, and 1 minus 1 gives me 0, so when I solve this one I get a equal to 2. The other thing I can do is, of course, pick my x equals to negative 3. So I'll go substitute x equals negative 3 into the equation. And I get 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9 plus 5, equals negative 3 plus 3 is 0a. So forget about that one. And negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4b. So this gives me negative 4 equals negative 4b. And therefore, b equals 1. Now that will be the easiest way of doing these instead of trying to expand and collect like terms. We still might need to do that in certain ones. You can do it on your calculator, menu, algebra and expand and when you do that it gives you your results. Example 14 Resolve 2x plus 10 divided by x plus 1 x minus 1 squared into partial fractions. Now here we have a denominator that's got the squared there, so we've got to be careful. So we've got 2x plus 10 divided by x plus 1 and x minus 1 squared, which will give us a divided by the first factor of x plus 1. Then it will give us plus the b divided by that repeat factor of x minus 1, and then our c divided by the repeat factor of x minus 1 squared. 
Now, this one will need to go for the same denominator first, so we're going to have x plus 1, x minus 1, all squared. So the a will have to multiply by the x minus 1, all squared. The b would have to multiply by the x plus 1 and the x minus 1. And the c would have to multiply by the x plus 1. So this will give us, when we expand and collect like terms, or just, or just do it expanding, 2x plus 10 will equal a x minus 1 squared plus b x plus 1 x minus 1 plus c x plus 1. Now the first thing we're going to do is pick one of them. Again, it's x equals to 1, negative 1, and that's a negative 1 again. So we're only going to have two values here. So let's say let x equal 1. And when we get 1 and the left-hand side, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 10, we get 12, equals 1 in the 1 minus 1 squared gives us 0. 1 for the b1 minus 1 gives us 0 again. So 1 with the c, 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get 2c. So c equals 6. Now we'll do let x equal negative 1. Negative 2, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 10 gives me 8. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, square root is 4, so we get 4a. For the b, gives us 0, and for the c will give us 0, so a equals 2. That's that one there. Now we haven't got another number so we can work out C. So we're going to have to substitute both those answers that we got. So substitute C equals 6, A equals 2 into the equation and then solve for C. So the equation becomes 2X plus 10 equals A is 2, so 2X minus 1 squared plus b, I'll just expand this one, x squared minus 1, plus, now c is 6, x plus 1, okay, now when we expand it, we end up getting, and collecting like terms, in brackets 2 plus b, I won't show all the steps, for x squared, and then plus 2x plus 8 minus b. And equating gives us 2 plus b equal to 0. Or also gives us 8 minus b, which is the number by itself, equal to 10. Because that's the number by itself. That's got an x there. And when we work this out, we're going to get b equals to negative 2. Therefore, we end up having 2x plus 10 divided by x plus 1, x minus 1 squared equals a was 2 divided by x plus 1, b is negative 2 divided by x minus 1, and c was positive 6 divided by x minus 1, all squared. Example 15. Resolve that one there. So again, I'll write this one, x squared plus 6x plus 5 divided by x minus 2, x squared plus x plus 1 equals, and we've got our first factor, so a, x minus 2. Now the second factor, we cannot factorise. So we're going to have it as bx plus c, all divided by, the x squared plus x plus 1. So when we work out the denominator, this is going to be a x squared plus x plus 1 plus b x plus c multiplied by x minus 2 all divided by the 1 denominator x squared plus x plus 1. And of course, this gives us same steps apply, x squared plus 6x plus 5, 
equal to a x squared plus x plus 1 plus b x plus c, I'll put that in brackets, x minus 2, subbing x equal to 2 as one of our values, will end up giving us 21 equals 7a, so a equals 3. Now, doing that, I better write it over here because I'm going to run out of room. I'll pre-write that equation and get x squared plus 6x plus 5 equal to, so expanding and collecting like terms, I won't put a equal to 3 just yet, it gives me a plus b, and then it will give me x squared plus a minus 2b plus c for x plus a minus 2c is the number. And if I equate now, and remember I've got a equal to 3, so equate gives me a plus b equals the 1, that's in front of the x squared there, but a equals 3, so I get b equals 1 minus 3, negative 2. And doing the C, I might as well just use this number here because I already know my A. So I'll get A minus 2C equals, and the number here is 5, but A equals 3. So I'll get 3 minus 2C equals 5, so negative 2C equals 5 minus 3 is 2, C equals negative 1. So I found my A, I found my B, and I found my C. Therefore x squared plus 6x plus 5 divided by x minus 2 x squared plus x plus 1 equates to a is 3 over that's a 3 x minus 2 plus where's my b b b is negative 2 so I'll write plus and I'll leave my negative 2 here x and my c is negative 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 1. We can make that simple if we want to. Example 16. Okay, this is improper ones. So we've got x to the 5 plus 2 divided by x squared plus 1. Now, long division here. I'm going to show you one way of doing the long division here, but I might do this on the board as long division just to confirm it. So when we do long division here, we're going to get x cubed plus x plus x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. And expressing that into partial fractions. We get x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1 equals to x plus 2 divided by x minus 1, x plus 1. Therefore, x to the 5 plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1 equals x cubed plus x and then this other one becomes minus 1 divided by 2x plus 1 plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1. So I didn't work all that one out but um, I'm sure you'll be able to do it. But I'll do the long division for you. Look I'll do the long division over here for you the long way and then we will do it in class a different way. x to the 5 plus 2, which means I have x cubed, that becomes x to the 5 minus x cubed. When you take them away, you'll get positive x cubed and you still got the plus 2. So this will be plus x here. So that will be x cubed minus x. When you take them away, 
you'll get 0 there and you'll get 2, sorry, x plus 2. So that's how you get that part there and that's how you get the remainder there. You can do it on your calculator just by going Algebra Expand and typing it in and you'll get that happening.